What's up, YouTube world? I was just out here cleaning up this brand new Jeep that I got, and I thought to myself, man, I hadn't done a YouTube video about this, and I hadn't introduced this to all the people that actually subscribe to me on YouTube. It's been a rough two years, guys. So I know I said brand new, but this is a 2020 Jeep Rubicon Gladiator, or Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. Uh, my first Jeep, I've always been looking at Jeeps, I know there's some give and take when you go to a Jeep from other premium trucks like the Sierra that I had, but I'm gonna tell you what, I've had this thing for probably about a week and a half now, and I love it. I love being able to take the tops out. I love riding around with it. It's fun to drive. It's not as comfortable as with the Sierra, but it's not as big either. Uh, much more capable off-road. And yes, I've been off-road. I'm cleaning it up right now. Uh, it's a pain getting all the you know, mud and stuff off of the tires and out of everything. But I got it pretty well clean. I didn't go mud bogging or anything. And I don't really plan on doing that. But I wanted to show you guys the Jeep and kind of talk to you about the options that it has and how I found it. So I've been looking at Jeeps for a while, probably two or three months. I wasn't really finding much of what I was looking for. I wanted a fully loaded Rubicon uh, Jeep Gladiator. I wanted the pickup truck bed because I kind of made a decision a while back that I needed a truck. I wanted something that was really capable off-road, so Rubicon was it. And I wanted all the options because I'm used to having a lot of, you know, comfort and convenience features and stuff. So I wanted those things. Uh, I was finding a lot of brown interior ones that were loaded out that, you know, the brown interior ones, you don't get that red dash that I actually really like. Uh, I'd much rather the red accents and black seats that we'll show here in just a second. But they were all in the, you know, 52, 53 range around here with 30 to 40,000 miles. And I was about to give up and I found this bad boy had 9,980 miles on it. It's a 2020, it was garage kept. A guy had bought it that owns a trucking business here in Bessemer, Alabama. And didn't really drive it that much apparently. Uh, thing is mint. There's almost no damage to the body, no scratches or nothing anywhere, hardly. The worst part is, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Town & Country Ford where this was uh, traded in at, tried to paint these black plastic pieces after they tried to polish it. See some polishing marks here towards the back where they got some, some polish on it. And I think they tried to paint those. Uh, there was paint overspray all over the fenders and stuff. I wish dealers wouldn't do that. I mean, I, I realize they're trying to make it look better for sale real quick, but you know, I guess the average person wouldn't care, but I see it and I care. So it took a while to get the overspray off everything. I had to polish the hood and whatnot. Uh, but other than that, there's a couple little scratches right here, but the body is really good. The interior is almost perfect. I know a lot of people on this channel that follow me probably really don't know a lot about Jeeps. Hell, I don't know a whole lot about them. But, you know, we're here to learn and we're here to talk about this bad boy. We got the auto light control. I got the bed utility group on it. I think the window sticker on this one was like 61 or 62,000. I'll try to pop that up on the screen right about now. Uh, so you can go ahead and pause it if you want to look at more of the options and stuff that it has. Uh, but it's got this bed utility group. It's got the LED light package. It's got the adaptive cruise control package. 8.4 Uconnect with the navigation and all. It's got the winter package. Uh, it's got the off-road plus mode, the auxiliary switch group. Uh, all things that I was looking for you know, and leather interior, of course. Uh, all things I was looking for when I was wanting one of these, you know. So, of course, with a Jeep, there's certain give or take. Like, you know, you don't get a power seat in a Jeep. It's kind of annoying, but I guess you don't really adjust a seat much if you're the only one driving it and you're getting in and out of it. I mean, you pretty much adjust a seat where you want it at and then you set it and forget it. Onto the back of this bad boy. Now this isn't a full review, but with the leather seats you get uh, these, I think they call them Mole or Mole, whatever. So you can clip things on there and they sell brackets and stuff that you can put on the back of the seats to hang things, medic kits, stuff like that, that you would need off road. Uh, this one has the locking storage boxes. So it's got the lock on here. The seats on a Gladiator 
lock. So if you have the top off, you can lock the seats. So if you want to store something back here and these cubbies behind the seats, you can have your storage and lock the seats so nobody can get to your stuff. This side opens and locks too. So you can lock anything in there that you want. It's got some power accessories, a uh, house plug here, 400 watt, some USBs and whatnot. Everything inside of Jeep can get wet. I got these slush mats that come with this one. And I like that there's air vents in the back. There's certain like, I looked at Broncos and to get the wild track with the hard top, they told me it would be at least a year. So that kind of threw that out. But the wild track, those LEDs there. The wild track edition doesn't have the vents going to the back passenger compartment, which I thought really weird that the Bronco doesn't have that. Uh, nice sliding back glass. Of course, it's not power because the whole top removed and you don't, you know, they want to have as least electrical connections as possible. Uh, I kind of don't understand that one because the back glass is a, uh, does have a heated defroster in it. So it already has one connector. So you could have just added a couple more wires for the motor for the back glass to be sliding, but whatever, you know, hashtag Jeep life, I guess. So tail lights, everything's LED. It's got the bed utility group, like I was saying. It's got the outlet here, LED bed lights. It's got the rails for tie downs. It's got the upgraded wheel package instead of just the anthracite wheels. Uh, I believe they're all still the same size. Uh, it comes with 33s from the factory. The Rubicons now have the Fox shocks. It's got a little road rash here, but this right here is a paint protection film. So most of it's under this paint protection film. All weather mats on this side. The sound system in this thing, man. It's got the speakers up here at the top. It's got a subwoofer right back there, a 10 inch subwoofer. It's got speakers down here in the dash and speakers up here. This thing, it really rocks. I mean, it sounds comparable to the Harman Kardon system that I had in the Hellcat. So, I mean, I was actually very surprised by the sound system in this. Let's go up to the engine wool here under the hood. Got the K&M filter, it was put in there by somebody else. The first owner it's a one owner vehicle clean carfax uh i got like 10,130 miles on it now uh i cleaned all this under the hood stuff up uh on this cleaning session put me some car pro pearl on everything to kind of make it easier to clean if it does get mud slung up in there uh while we're off-roading sometimes because i'm going to take this off-road like i said no mud bogging or nothing Nothing like serious off-road and rock crawling, but I mean, we're gonna be riding some trails and stuff in it. And I'm gonna try to obtain a GoPro to get a couple videos and stuff the way I can post some of that stuff too. I know some guys like seeing that kind of stuff, see what it's capable of and what positions you can get it in. Uh, of course, the Rubicon's got the disconnecting sway bar that you can't really see here. LED, data, or LED running lights, LED headlights. I'm really surprised by how good the headlights and these running lights are in this Jeep. Winch capable steel front bumper on this one. You can remove these end caps for better clearance. And you can pop this cap out here, take this top piece off, and a winch will go right down into the bumper there. It's already ready to go. Pretty much the only thing that this particular one doesn't have is the front trail cam. I wish it did have that. I know there's options to add one from Z Automotive uh, and use a taser and all to activate it but it it activates it as a uh, a cargo uh, camera instead of the front camera so you don't get the lines and stuff i wish there was some sort of better solution for that to actually add it as the front camera and have it appear on the screen as the front camera with the driving lines like the front camera would from the factory but lights here are all led it's got the 3.6 Pentastar V6. I thought it was gonna be well underpowered, but it's actually, it ain't that bad. I mean, it gets up to the speed limit fine. Uh, it does have the stock 33 still on it. It's a totally stock vehicle. Rubicon does have a little bit of a, a lift kit and wider stance. I think the Dana axles that's in here are a little wider, I think an inch or two wider than the uh, standard axle. So you get the wider fender flares and all on it. So, I mean, I love this thing. It's a little bumpy ride, but take the top off the freedom panels and remove them bad boys and ride around. I can only imagine how awesome it is to ride around with the doors off. I mean, 
if you've never done it before and you've never driven a Jeep that has at least the tops removed, is not the tops and the doors off, then you really can't comment on it because I was like, yeah, whatever. Before I own this, yeah, I mean, it might be okay, but I mean, is it really, I mean, people talk like it's an awesome experience. Well, it is. It is an awesome experience. I don't know why. I can't explain it. It's ridiculous to think about it, but when you're driving down the road, listening to the radio with the tops out, the biggest freaking smile on my face that you, that you would ever see. So I love this thing. So that's pretty much it for today. I just wanted to do a real quick rundown. Like I said, this wasn't no review or nothing like that. Uh, I am gonna be doing things to it. I gotta think about what I'm gonna do first. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go 35s. I don't think I'm gonna go 37s. I'm not gonna be an extreme off-roader. I'm not gonna deck this thing all out and it's not gonna be a mall crawler either. It's gonna be somewhere in between. Uh, I look forward to really having a lot of fun riding around in this thing with the tops out, tops off. I gotta get me some things to hang the doors and stuff up, start looking at what I'm gonna buy for this thing. I'm really impressed with it so far. It's been great fun. No issues to speak of so far. Uh, other than the back window does have the leak issue. Uh, there's a recall and it's among Ford pickup trucks, Dodge pickup trucks, these Jeep uh, Gladiators, and uh, I think some of the Chevrolet product, the smaller trucks. They use some kind of inferior plastics and the plastic cracks and it starts leaking. So I'm taking it Monday to Voiles Chrysler here. Uh, I've got bumper to bumper warranty till the 21st of this month. So I don't have very long to get this thing in uh, to get those that issue addressed. But that's really the only problem that I have right now. Uh, it also has the recall pending for the uh, drive shaft where they forgot to put some grease in some of them. So they recalled the drive shaft. I'm gonna go ahead and get these recalls done I guess the guy just didn't hardly drive it. He didn't care anything about going to get that stuff done. But it's good to be back in a Mopar. Mopar, no car, whatever you want to say it. I've, I've got a love affair with Dodge and FCA products, okay? I've had uh, three different chargers. One of them was the Hellcat. I've got this uh, Jeep right now. I've also looked at the pickup trucks. They're awesome. The interior is miles above. Even on this Jeep, the fit and finish inside of this Jeep is better than the GMC Sierra pickup truck that I had. I mean, this thing as a Jeep squeaks and rattles and, and has been more dependable so far than what that $66,000 GMC Sierra AT4 fully loaded out was when I had it. I mean, talk about a bad experience with a brand and all. But thanks everybody for watching. I've been talking for like eight minutes now. Uh, there's gonna be actual videos of modifications to come on this, so stay tuned. If you get some Jeep friends, uh, when I start posting out videos uh, about the Jeep and modifications and stuff and jump that I'm doing to it, send them my way. Uh, appreciate a like, subscribe if you haven't because there's more stuff to come. You can check out some of my other videos. I do plenty of modification videos on other vehicles as well. Looking forward to the process and the build on this. Thanks guys.